pattern it. I hope that you and your family are healthy and safe during these unsettling times in our world's history. But for today's video, I thought I'd sit down and take you guys on a little voyage as to how soldiers would field cast bullets during the American Civil War. So with that said, let's jump right into it. Now, the first thing I think I should mention is that during the American Civil War, there were hundreds of different types of ammunition being distributed and fired. Um, as the war broke out, neither side was truly prepared for the battle that was about to happen. They didn't have enough arms or ammunition on hand to supply the troops. As a result, a lot of troops brought weapons from home. There was just a wide variety of weapons going around. Um, for a little insight, there was about 370 or more different types of small arms, rifles, and handguns being used during the Civil War. So a wide variety of weapons, many of which used not only different types of bullets, but different caliber of bullets. There was bullets ranging from 22 caliber up to about 85. Imagine that, an 85 caliber bullet. So there was a lot of different bullets going around. Now this created a, a supply problem for both of the armies. If you had a unit that might have Spencer carbines in the unit and Colt revolving rifles in a unit and Springfield rifles in a unit, you're gonna need lots of different types of ammunition. And supplying these different types of ammunition, over 500 different types of small arms ammunition used during the Civil War, supplying these to the armies became a huge problem. Um, they were trying to manufacture them, but they just could not keep up with the demand in manufacturing and then transporting these through train, wagon, backpack, whatever they had to the field. So as a result, many of the troops were resulting to casting their own bullets. Now, according to the U.S. records, there was over 1 billion rounds of small arms ammunition purchased in our country and abroad for the United States Army and the best estimates are about 200 million for the Confederate Army. So there was a lot of bullets out there, but many were field cast. So let's look into how that was done. Now to begin with, the soldiers would have small bars of lead and they would cut these into smaller segments, heat them up and melt them down and pour them into a bullet mold. Now I have here a Civil War era pistol bullet mold this one was found in a barn in Dalton, Georgia by a good friend of mine, Wade. And he was uh, kind enough to give this to me to make this video for you guys. This one's pretty neat. It's a, a 32 caliber pistol bullet mold. And it has some unique tools on it as well. On the top here, we have a worming tool. Now this looks like a uh, wine bottle corkscrew. And this would have gone in through the barrel if, if your powder had gotten wet and you needed to unload your weapon. This would go in through the barrel or into the chamber and this corkscrew would screw into the lead bullet and then the bullet could be extracted from the gun. Safe way, quote unquote, to unload your gun if your powder got wet. And that's kind of where the expression keep your powder dry comes from. If your powder gets wet, you got to use your worm, get it out of the gun. Total pain in the butt, but a tool to do that. On the other end of this tool, we have a tamping tool. Now this was used to tamp the powder in the bullet into the gun. These were loaded manually and you had to actually tamp the powder down and that would then allow you to fire your weapon with a, a packed charge. Another tool on here worth noting is in between here, we have some crescent shaped snips, um, sort of like mm, cable snips or something. And this was used to cut the excess lead or the sprue from the ball after you had made it. And this would give you a nice cut. And the shape of these, the little curved shape, would allow you to create a rounded, perfectly rounded cut as you were cutting the sprue and the excess flashing from around the ball that you had created. Now, this mold is 150 years old. There is some space there. Um, it is, has a lot of more wear. It was used. Um, and as a result, there's a little bit of seepage from the bottom, and I have to make some accommodations to do pours because of that, but we'll get into that in a minute. For now, let's jump into actually creating a field cast bullet. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to be melting down a little bit of this camp lid, and I'm gonna break this into steps and uh, to make this a little easier to film. But for the first step, what they would have to do, this camp lid is dirty, 
and it is oxidized as any metal would be after being stored or transported for a while. So soldiers would have likely had to have completed this step as well. And this first step is to move, remove the impurities from the lead and get a much cleaner looking metal like this. So let's begin by melting down this small piece of camp lead. You can sort of see the lead starting to bead out of this. Now as I tap it, you'll see the lead actually start to pull apart from the slag. And by tapping this, I can mostly separate them. I'm getting the lead down here to the nose of the spoon and the slag is slipping back to the back here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and just give it a pour just to give myself a little plug here of pure lead. So I'm getting little bits of pure lead like this out. Now I'm going to separate out several here and for the sake of time I will speed this all up but I'm going to do a little bit more slag separation and my hope is to end up with several uh, discs like this of pure lead. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this much more pure lead, I'm gonna heat it back up, and then I'm gonna to attempt to pour it into the mold. Now, again, this mold is 150 years old. Um, it has some leaks. Uh, it doesn't line up perfectly anymore. So to uh, compensate for that, I'm going to add a little bit of extra lead here. And I am also going to let this cool um, quite a bit before I pour it in hopes that it might fully cool within the mold before it all seeps out of the cracks. So we'll set that aside. Go ahead and grab our mold. And you can see this is already starting to cool. I'm gonna let it cool two more seconds, one, two, and try and pour. Okay, that looks like a pretty good pour to me. And as you can see, there is some of a sprue sticking out in the top there. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have here. Okay, that looks like a really good pour to me. We'll give it a second to cool down and go ahead and try and pour another while that one's cooling. We will uh, take this and put that in there, put that back in there, and a little bit more. So for me, the remedy to this has been to have a little bit extra always in there. And then it's a timing thing of not too hot, not too cold, getting the temperature just right. So let's try and melt this all back down again. Looking at this molten metal is uh, entrancing. It's sort of like the Terminator or something. It's fascinating. All right, we're gonna let it cool. One, two, here we go. All right, I left a lot of flashing there, but I was able to knock it off right at the end. Now, not sure if that fully filled the mold. Let's turn this off. But, let's see. It might have. This could be another good pour. That would be excellent. Oh yeah, that looks like another great pour. Very nice. So, our next step in this process would now be to trim the excess, uh, the sprue here, and to shape the ball so that it will go down the barrel. So we're gonna use our little trimmer tool here. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna take off this excess sprue as best we can, just like that. We're gonna come from the other side and give it a trim. And that's gonna to help to round it all off because as I stated earlier, these are crescent shaped in here. So it, it goes ahead and rounds it off some for you as it takes it off. 
And we'll come in and finish that up with a little file or a pocket knife. We'll go here to the other side. And I found the thinner these sprues are, the harder it is actually to uh, get them off with this tool. But that's a pretty good idea of where you can get with that little sprue cutter. You can get that big chunk off, as you see the big chunk there, that came right off. And then we'll come in behind it and uh, use just a pocket knife or something and finish shaping this. Now again, if you're doing this at home, be careful with your pocket knife or you're gonna lose your totem chip. If you don't know what a totem chip is, it's, it's, a, it's a Boy Scout thing, I guess. Now this is tricky. A man could lose a finger doing this. But luckily there was some tolerance um, for those smooth bore guns and you could get something down it pretty easily um, with all the paper wadding and things that they put in with it. So, but at any rate, that's pretty decent little, little pour. And uh, I'd say you could load that up into a, a smooth bore pistol and get it down the barrel. That pretty much sums up how they would do it. And, uh, you know, they were much faster at it than I am, almost assuredly. And uh, it takes a little practice. I have done this a few times, but not many. Although in this day and age, I may be producing a lot more of my own ammunition. It's hard to say, you know, the world's, the world's going crazy. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and seeing how small arms bullets were field cast during the American Civil War. Certainly an enjoyable little experiment for me and a reminder of the adversity that these troops faced in the field. So with that said, I hope that you guys stay safe, keep your families healthy, and these days and times we may be all molding our own bullets again before long. Stay safe. See you next time. Boom.